Hey everyone, Reality Stop here. Wanted to do a quick tutorial on Bolt and the caching behavior that you can get with unit uh, control flows and when you can get away with not using them. But before we get into that, take a look at this graph right here. And uh, it's just a simple input, set a variable to ourself. If it's not null, go ahead and output the variable. What if I told you that this would actually exception? Doesn't make sense that it would, would it? <laughs> Before we get into that, though, um, let's let's go up here. I've got just a simple on start uh, wired into three different examples here that I'm going to use to ex explain and highlight this behavior and uh, just what you can do with it. So uh, first up, I just have a simple random range. Uh, this is going to produce a random value between zero and ten. And I'm going to print that twice uh, by passing through this sequence here. And uh, if I execute this, you'll see that, in fact, this does happen. I get 3.48. That's a random number. If I ran this again, I'd get a different number. But the important thing is that I got the same value both times. I got 3.48 going to the first log and 3.48 going to the second log. And in fact, if you look down here, Unity is telling me that uh, in fact, it's this exact same message has printed out both times. And that is because I have specified to Bolt to run this random range, and it did and got a value, and then it cached it. It cached the value so that every time these debug logs asked for that value, they got whatever the output value of the random range was, the cached value. And so, thus, they got the same number. But I don't have to wire it up that way. I could, in fact wired up like this. And you notice it's not dim, it's not, there's no warning, this is perfectly valid, it's fine to wire things up this way. I don't provide the control flow in, and instead Bolt is going to infer that it needs to run this because it's wired up and the output is being used. But take a look. If I do that, I get a different value each time. The first time I got 2.71, and the second time I got 9.94. That's because this unit, if it's not connected up to a control flow, I'm not specifying when it should execute. And to reduce overhead, Bolt doesn't keep track of every node in the system and whether it's been run every time step or every, every step of, of simulation. Instead, um, because I didn't specify when, whenever the value is asked for, the unit will execute. And if that's a super unit or something like that, you can actually use that behavior to your advantage. You can create a super unit, wire up the output 16 times, and if you don't specify the control flow in, then it's gonna act kind of like a function and it's gonna evaluate that each time. Although we'll go into some subtleties with that here in a, in a few moments. But there you go. You can you can see that um, you'll get two different behaviors depending on whether you wire that up. It's perfectly valid to not wire it up. And in fact, if we just had one node here or something like that, that's, you don't have to worry about it really executing multiple times. You can just do that and let Bolt figure out the, the details. But um, be aware that if you aren't connecting those inputs, then you won't get the caching behavior that uh, Bolt typically provides. Sorry about my little email notification down there. Um, so, so I guess one question might be is what does Bolt do with nodes that don't have a control flow in? Uh, like our get variable here that I, I use in this example. Uh, I'm using a get variable here just as an example of a node that doesn't have a control flow. I cannot specify when this node should execute. Instead, I have to rely on Bolt's inference to execute that at its discretion. So what I have here are, again, two logs, and I'm getting the value each time, but the difference is after the first one, it's going to come over here and it's going to set the variable. This is just a variable I just created on my graph. It's currently three, and after the first one executes, I'm going to change it to a one. So the question is, since this is a node that doesn't have a control flow, does Bolt cache it, or is it going to get the value again when it executes the second time? And because I'm an idiot, I connected that up when I was in play mode. So let me do that again. And we'll run this and we'll get our answer. And in fact, you can see that Bolt does get again. It does not cache the value. So I got three the first time and I got a one the second time. It did actually execute this node again. So be aware that even without the control flows, sometimes your nodes are executing multiple times. Um, if we didn't want that, we could perhaps use a cache node 
Uh, let me rewire this just a little bit here. Um, what I can do is I can wire my variable up to the cache and force Bolt to use the cache value. So what's going to happen is this time it's the first execution. It's going to get the variable. It's going to cache it and provide that cached variable to each of the debug logs. So this is a, a way I can change that behavior if I don't want that requerying behavior. If I want to hold on to that variable for the whole um, sequence of the graph, I don't have to necessarily assign that to another graph variable or something like that. I can use a cache node to change this behavior. Now the cache node itself is a little bit um, it's got some nuance to it too. Uh, it, it does not like not being connected by control flow, so I can't really rely on the inferred uh, behavior with it. Because what ends up happening is because it has never run, it has never updated its cache and it just has the default value of null. So I have to provide a value. If I, if I want a value at all into cache, I have to provide a control flow in uh, at least once. And cache is pretty handy because it's going to hold that value across updates. It's going to crawl, hold it um, basically for perpetuity as long as I specify when it needs to update the cache value away from whatever it is or null uh, to the appropriate value. But that's one way you can get around that, um, uh, that multiple execution. Uh, if you want to feed lots of different nodes from a single uh, node that does not have a control flow in, and so you can't use that that caching, uh, that's one one use case for this this cache node here uh, that we can use. Okay, my last example that I showed at the beginning of this video um, is is kind of a, a mind bender, and it really dives into just what Bolt is doing when you don't specify a control flow for a node. So for instance, up here, I don't tell Bolt when this random range should execute, but Bolt is pretty smart. If I tell Bolt that I need to do something with a value that it doesn't have, it will go get it. And so, uh, oh, they didn't play mode, one moment. <laughs> so what I can do here is I can chain up complex graphs without a control flow at all. And in fact, uh, I'm just opting not to, to specify here. And Bolt will figure all of this out. It will step, it will flow backwards. It will say, okay, this debug log needs a message. Okay, well, I need the output of this. Oh, well, before I can execute this, I need to call this node so that I can get the value so that I know what my minimum is so that when I execute, I can get an appropriate value. And of course, if I could change this, I could, I could chain this together with, with um, some math statements. So let's put in a uh, subtract a, a value from, from our, our variable. And all of this wires together. You, you notice that they were dim before I wired that up. But as soon as I do, Bolt has inferred that this whole chain here needs to be executed to provide the value for these things that are hooked up. And in fact, if I execute this, You'll see that. It will actually execute all these. These You'll see the values there. It took. It got the value three. It subtracted one from it. It used that as its minimum value and so on. So Bolt is going to work backwards and you can use this and you can build wonderful graphs without worrying about your control flow usually. This example down here is one where you can't do that. Um, if I try to rely on Bolt to provide me uh, with this, this output, it actually won't work. Take a little look at this uh, super unit here. You can see I have an input where I, I take myself, I set the graph variable to myself, I feed it into a null check, which of course it's not null. So let's go ahead and we, we provide the output um, and it should be ourself. But if I actually run this, you'll see that I actually get an error. This fails because the variable doesn't exist. And that is because Bolt is executing backwards. So it came down here, it got this debug log statement. It says, I need message. It looks at where it can get message from. Message is wired to the output of the super unit. So it says, give me the output from the super unit, which is this variable here. All of these nodes here did not get executed, even though that is my control flow. So even though I, even in this case, I have said when they should execute, they didn't actually fire at all because I didn't specify when this node should execute. So please be aware that if you're using super units, um, 
the proper way to do this and not get the crash or the, the exception is to actually provide that input. It won't use your control flow. Yeah, you can see I'm now uh, outputting game object. It won't use your control flow that you've specified in a super unit unless you actually use that control flow outside of the super unit. And uh, there's more complex examples I could give of this that uh, are really mind bender. The one I actually encountered it on was a very complex graph, but it would take a long time for me to explain and I want to keep this video short. But you can, using these facts that are covered here, I think you can probably figure that out uh, if you encounter it and, um, and hopefully that helps if you encounter something really weird or you want to change the behavior that you're, you're seeing in your graph um, by manipulating the control flows and the caching behavior that Bolt uses. That's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, hopefully this is just a quick help for, for uh, anyone who's new to Bolt and uh, can help explain why you see some of the weird behaviors you may be seeing in your graphs, uh, depending on whether you've hooked up your control flows or not. All right, see you next time. Thanks for watching.